Okay, it's ready now. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. It is 1030 and I am calling this meeting of the zoning administrator to order. Item number two, it is February 15, 2024, draft minutes. There were no changes to the minutes and will be approved as they were submitted. And for public comments, now here we are taking public comments on item three. This is non-agenda matter. This is a time when anyone, any person may address matters not listed on this agenda today, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. If there's anybody attending in person who would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Zoning Administrator, we have no public comments. Thank you, Recording Secretary. And we will call on each raise hand. Say, okay, nothing, we have no comments. And then we will go to number four, statement of purpose. I have to read the statement. It says, the Zoning Administrator is appointed by the Planning and Economic Development Director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements, land use permits. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission, or city council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. And next item is a consent items. We have no consent items. And we will go to schedule items. The first item is a public hearing. It's a conditional use permit for outdoor storage and commissionary kitchen open during transitional hours at the address is 100 Sebastopol Road. File number is CUP-036 and city planner Susan Hartman is going over her presentation. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Keeley. My name is Suzanne Hartman. I'm the project planner for this uh, proposed condition of uh, conditional use permit application, um, again, located at 100 Spastical Road. The proposed project um, includes outdoor storage for mobile food vendors, as well as an indoor uh, food and preparation area. Um, and they are also proposing to operate during transitional hours, which also um, is required to obtain a minor use permit um, for, well, it's permitted within the zoning district by obtaining a minor use permit. Uh, the proposed hours of operation will be from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And staff would just like to note that there will be a condition of approval that states that um, all outdoor activity would cease by 9 p.m. Um, so no, at the request of uh, there being concerns of over noise uh, later at night. So this is an aerial view of the project site. And this is kind of a, a little bit more zoomed out aerial view where you can kind of see um, the surrounding uh, properties. Oh, and I also just want to note that um, the food trucks will only really be stored there uh, during at night and during the day. The, it's proposed that the food trucks will be um, offsite um, operating on other properties. So the general plan land use designation is medium residential and light industry, and the zoning district is light industrial. The light industrial zoning district is applied to areas appropriate for some light industrial uses, um, as well as some commercial service uses and activities that may be incompatible with residential, retail, and or office uses. The light industrial zoning district is consistent with the light industry land use classification of the general plan. And as you can see, the surrounding parcels here, we have uh, to the north, we have station mixed use and maker mixed use. Um, the station mixed use zoning 
zoning district is applied to areas within downtown Santa Rosa to provide for a range of visitor serving uses, including retail, restaurants, entertainment, um, and hotels in proximity to the downtown station, smart station. Um, and while commercial uses are emphasized, uh, multifamily housing is also um, allowed to support the daytime and evening vitality of the downtown station area. And then the maker mixed use district is applied to areas within downtown Santa Rosa to emphasize a balance of mix of residential, creative, and maker oriented uses, um, such as distilleries and microbreweries. Um, cannabis is also allowed here, and tech startups um, and multifamily residential units would also be encouraged uh, in, on these uses. Um, it is good to note, though, that currently the existing uses are uh, industrial. And then to the east and west, we have medium density residential uh, neighborhoods. And to the south, we have in light industrial uses. This is the proposed site plan. And we just want to note that there was a traffic study uh, provided for this project proposal and our engineer, traffic engineering division did not have any comments or concerns uh, regarding the traffic study. And this is the floor plan of where the uh, commissionary, sorry, commissionary kitchen would be, um, where the food prep and storage uh, would be located. These are the required findings that must be met for um, obtaining approval for a minor conditional use permit. And these are the required findings continued. And I also wanted to point out that the zoning code does state that an outdoor storage area um, should be completely enclosed by a solid wall or solid gate. Um, but also the zoning ministry may allow a substitution of an alternative uh, solid design um, after determining that the substitution would be ad would adequately comply with the provisions of the outdoor storage zoning code section. Um, the required wall or fence uh, cannot be less than six feet tall, um, and they should incorporate design elements to limit easy climbing and access by unauthorized persons, and would also be subject to approval by the zoning administrator um, unless the wall or fence exceeded six feet, um, which in this case it's not. Um, so the additional minor use permit would not be required. This project is, has been found in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for class one exemption under CEQA guidelines section 15301 and that the site is entirely developed and the proposed use would not involve a negligible expansion of the previous industrial use. I do, I will say that there are some updates from when this uh, slide was last uh, previously uh, updated. So I'll just kind of go over that real quick. Um, we would like to disclose that there was a code enforcement case open on this property, um, but from quoting from uh, our code enforcement officer, Joseph Moody, who was assigned to this code enforcement case, um, all, elect, all illegal activity appears to have ceased and the case uh, can be closed upon approval of the uh, uh, granting of the minor conditional use permit for outdoor storage. Some public comments uh, that were received by staff um, include um, questions about if any exterior lighting was being proposed. Um, and it sounded like they were very much in support of there being exterior lighting. Um, so we, I was, staff was considering adding it to condition of approval that if exterior lighting was being proposed, that it, as long as it's, uh, it's permissible, as long as it's in compliance with zoning code section, 20-30.080 um, for outdoor lighting. Um, there was also some uh, comments regarding concern over the project not being appropriate for the neighborhood and that the hours of operation would disturb the nearby residents. Um, and staff would just like to note that the property is zoned as light industrial and the outdoor storage use is permitted by obtaining a minor conditional use permit. Um, and there are other surrounding uh, light industrial uses currently. Um, and the staff has worked with the applicants to condition that no exterior activities would commence after 9 p.m. Um, and that they would be conditioned to comply with the noise ordinance. 
And all outdoor storage um, needs to comply with the ap applicable zoning codes um, regarding being shielded from street view. So with that, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit to allow outdoor storage for mobile food vendors, as well as an indoor food preparation storage area, and to allow the proposed use to operate during transitional hours uh, between 8 and 10 p.m. at 100 Sebastopol Road. And uh, staff is also um, requesting that the Zoning Administrator um, allow some additional conditions of approval, which I will now read off. Uh, the proposed fencing along Sebastopol Road frontage shall be constructed, constructed of an alternative design and material subject to review and approval by a planner. Exterior washing of the food vendor vehicle shall be prohibited at this site. Uh, three, if applicable, all proposed outdoor lighting shall comply with the requirements stated in zoning code section 20-30, uh, .080, outdoor lighting, and four, all raw materials, equipment, or finished projects, products uh, stored shall be stored in a manner that they cannot be blown by wind from the enclosed storage area, not be stored above the height of the enclosing wall or fence within 10 feet of the wall or fence, and not to be placed or allowed to remain outside the enclosed storage area. And this is my contact information. If anyone has any questions or comments, uh, my phone number and email are listed up here. And we also have the applicant. Um, there is one applicant, um, sorry, there's kind of two people here that I've been in contact with. One is here in the room and there is also one uh, over Zoom if, if anyone or the zoning minister has any questions directly for the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Oh, is there anything that the applicant team wants to include or mention? Um, the, you know, only one thing. I think there's uh, some uh, there's some Connex storage containers on there. They're probably eight foot tall, and they would be inside that fenced area. And the fence is six foot tall. I, I'm not. I'm, maybe it's a nuance, and that's fine. But just as a reading it, it, it would be above the six foot. Um, you know, just thought good to clarify that. Yeah, I don't think anything else really is, is higher. Obviously, the trucks are probably a little over that six foot two um, fence. But I think you're thinking of whatever, pallets of materials or something that um, supplies that would be outside of the kind of a enclosed thing. So I just want to make sure that clarifications, that we understand that those containers are probably eight foot and that that, would, that, that doesn't violate that, that condition. Okay. Anything um, else from the applicant online? Was there a... Anyways, no. Okay, now I will open it for the public comments. If you are attending in person and wish to make, wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Oh, that was secretary. I'm sorry. I That's read all yours. right. Uh, sir, if, if you'd like to make a comment on this item, uh, if you could please make your name for the record. My name is Frank Lego. I'm one of the property owners of... Uh, Properties across the street in the Roberts District, I have a 207 Sebastopol Road, which is adjacent to 217 and 250 Sebastopol Road. That is the location of the California Commissary, which is a like uh, use of this proposal. I have personal experience of what goes on there because I live next door to it. The nature of the operation is the trucks are there from 10 at night until 8 in the morning, and that's for them being serviced and flamed. And by the nature of the, the health department codes require that the trucks are in a commissary in a place in which they can be cleaned. Where is these trucks going to be cleaned since you just stated that they don't have to be, they're not going to be cleaned there? Where are they going to happen? My experience is they're cleaning and servicing these trucks from 10 at night until 8 in the morning. They're out on the road from 8 in the morning till 10 at night selling, and that's where their, oper their hours of operation are technically off the premises somewhere else. And their name for this commissary is from 10 at night till 8 in the morning. You can hear the music people play a block away. It's very loud and it's continuous all night long. 
banging and flaming. And uh, I don't see how they're going to, the proposal of the not going to be happening at night when the nature of the business and the use of the property it is for that very use of cleaning and servicing the trucks. And I don't see how they're going to be inside. They're going to have to be outside. And so that means this is going to constitute a continual use around the flock. We're trying to get the property across the street developed for housing. And this is not going to incentivize any developers to come in and build housing across the street from a busy 24-hour-a-day commissary. And this is going to be a 24-hour-a-day operation. It is not true that they're just going to work from 8 in the morning till 10 at night. By the nature of the business and my experience of what actually happens, I used to run a 24-hour industrial bakery down in Hayward. I know what goes on at night, and you have to do this work at night. It's around the clock. And living next door to it is not what you want. And then there's this uh, issue of the odors that penetrate. Sometimes the odors are great. I had a bakery. Everybody loved the odors. But I know what the other things they cook are not something I want to live next door to and smelling night long. I, I still got 58 seconds. <laughs> uh, the adjacent property, both east and west, are residential. And we're proposing the nature of it in the hundreds of units to the north. And uh, we're trying to get the zoning adjusted to so that the developers would come in and build on this property. And this is not going to help us. And that is precluding getting affordable housing built, which is what is needed in the Roseland area. More food truck commissaries in the Roseland area are not what's really needed by the public. That's it. Is there anybody else who would like to make a public comment? Sir, go ahead. If you could please state your name for the record. Okay. Can I hand you a little handout? <coughs> Can I have your name for the record? Dave Zedrick, Z E D R I C K. I own the property directly across the street from where the aqua truck activity is going to occur. And you will see my name on it. It's a pretty good size site so straight across. Um, Dominguez owns the property next to me. Shamrock owns the property behind us. And uh, the where the silos are, the grain silos are, Ted Allegra and his partner own that. We've been trying to uh, work with the city for several years now to get our property rezoned. For some reason, they zoned our properties a, a far five in an area that should be a far one. And they fought that. We fought it and argued about it all this time. But they finally had a little change in management and they downsized it to a FAR-3. I, I don't know if that's actually going to be helpful or not. Uh, FAR-1 or FAR-2 would be, would, would, be, would be more suitable. But we're very concerned, and we're less than 300 feet from our sidewalk to the sidewalk uh, where they are. And uh, we believe that this is going to impose much too much uh, noise, particularly at night. For There's going to be hundreds of houses potentially built on our properties. That's very important. And once this operation uh, is in business, if they aren't able to keep the noise down and or keep it presentable to a typical neighborhood business, um, who's going to want to build hundreds of homes across the street and something like that. That's our, our concern. I don't mean that you're going to do that that way, it's, I'm not, but it can happen. What happens when it does happen? And are we still in a position to be able to file a complaint with the city and get some resolve to that? Um, 
That's very important. I'm glad you're shaking your head yes. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. If there's any questions uh, from anybody here, we have to answer those. But we've been here for, we've been trying to get our permits for the last 10 years. And that we're finally, we finally got rezoned to a point where we think we can move forward and we need to move forward. Our, ours is an old part of town. Uh, we're not allowed to do anything other than build houses by city statute or whatever you want to call that. Uh, so we're stuck. We want to get unstuck. Thank you. Would anybody else like to make a public comment? We have no further public comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Cliff. I have talked to you both. I know the questions about the zone. So hopefully that will get solved. But right now we have a use permit for the property south of it, that's zoned to light industrial. I have a question from the applicant for the applicant. So there's a condition that says no activity after 9 p.m. And based on the project description, it's only to park those trucks there at night. That is what's going to happen there and is ba basically being used for overnight parking. Is that correct? Yes, in the commissary kitchen, maybe for prep. And the kitchen is inside of the inside building. The building. Can you just share the floor plan or side yeah. plan? So all the work for the cooking, preparing will be inside of the kitchen? Yes. Okay. And there's a condition that says no work shall be happen after 9 p.m. No exterior car wash is allowed on the site. And if that happens, you can file a code enforce code complaint, like a complaint, and we will send our code enforcement officers on the site. And anything like that, a noise, loud music, again, you can file a complaint because yes, it's close to a residential and the property owner has to comply with the noise ordinance. May yeah. I am wondering as well, um, if I may interject, um, I'm wondering if maybe there's also a, a condition we could add that if there is a maybe a contact for the property owner or whoever's in operation um, that there could be some sort. I know in, in the past we've had yeah. um, like a list of who to contact if there is no one who's past those hours. So you can also directly call that you operator. Have a set um, I can add that one and I can add a condition and I will share the resolution clip. If you email us, we can share you the signed resolution that will add the condition for any like a complaint or noise. On top of you can file a code enforcement violation, you can also contact the property owner and let them know what is happening. Because again, after 9 p.m., we don't want any noise in that area. And all the work for cleaning can be only for inside of the truck. No exterior car washing, no like a, any outdoor activity or music after 9 p.m. Can we get a copy of that? <laughs> the, when the resolution gets signed, We'll have the conditions. We have email to you. Cliff, you have my email and you can email me. I will send you the resolution. I mean, I will send you the resolution. Just email me. I will send it to you. And I have a question from the applicant about the fence. We were driving there yesterday. I noticed in that area, there are lots of like a car trucks, not from your property, but in general on that street, they were parked on the street. We saw U-Hauls on the street from other properties. And Sebastopol is like a, one of the main streets and there are residential on the site. Have you prepared or planned on what type of fence to propose there? Um, we, we've looked at several, and uh, so we we don't have a we don't have it nailed down. But we've been we've gotten some ideas from the planner um, of what they would like to see, and and so we're we're just trying to identify the exact one. Um, okay. The application, and I think there's a condition that the planner needs to approve what we. Put, put there. So um, as I'm as I'm hearing this too, though I'm, I'm you know thinking something that will also maybe help with someone well. would screen those outdoor storages and trucks there. And another question I have, I don't want to ask you to start the business, start parking and car cars there or trucks there before you have the fence there. I want to add a conditions there in your resolution that says the work or the use cannot commence until you have submitted the building permit for the fence or the proposal for the fence has submitted. Because when people drive there, I don't want to see all the car and trucks or whatever you have stored there. So it should be first screened and then commence the work. So we will add the condition that say the work cannot be commenced until the fence has been constructed or built or a building permit has been submitted for that. Building permits. Okay. okay. Which one? The one facing the Sebastopol. No, building permit? 
built or building permit. Those are two different times. Okay. I believe it should be constructed first because we had cases that the use has started, but the fence was never built. So we would prefer to see the first fence being built and then you can store the trucks there. Okay. And if you propose some also landscaping to make it look nicer, it would hardly be supported. And so we will add a Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to close public comment. Yeah. When, oh, I'm sorry. When the time comes. Okay. So I will close it. I will close it. Sure. <laughs> and also you will add the condition about exterior lighting. I think you added that any proposed exterior lighting shall comply with the light or okay. And I'm sorry, I'm closing the public <laughs> comment section. And I do not have any comments, but I will approve it. But as you saw the comments, conditions, we are adding many conditions there to make sure it will not create any nuisance to the neighbor's residential adjacent yeah. and make it look nicer because Sebastopol is a primary street. I mean, it's our, our goal to be a good neighbor as well. So um, we're, we, we hear it. So we'll, we'll do our, our part. Thank you. I have, I would like to um, get one clarification as well. It says one condition says that uh, they can't have any exterior activity after 9 p.m., but when can they start? How early in the morning? No. It's eight. Is it eight? Is it eight? It's eight. Okay. Eight. eight and 10 or eight and nine? Eight, eight to 10, I eight. believe, were the hours yeah. of operation. So it would be. And, but it, it, there's a condition. Okay. Uh, the, I just saw the condition of approval that says they can't do exterior after nine so yeah okay we can we can make that more it's, clear it's up to you i just didn't understand it so okay with that i have no more questions on this one and i can sign this resolution and cliff again emailed me or the app the planner she can send you the resolution and we will add that condition to provide your number so please provide your number or the contact person for yeah. susan she can add them the conditions okay. the resolution in public doc yes yes yeah, okay. Okay. With that, I will sign it and approve it. And I have no more conditions or questions. Thank you. And we will move on the next item on the agenda. It's public meeting. This is also a conditional use permit for high limit barbershop located at 791 Lombardi Court. File number is CUP 23-076 and the platinum. Planner Jandon Briscoe will present the project. Um, I forgot how to pull up PowerPoint. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Or oh, the share screen. Thank you. I'm mute right here. You can go. Just no, you're good. Okay, room is mic. It's gonna pick it. Good morning. Uh, my name is Janet Briscoe, and I'm here to present to you High Lemon Barbershop, located at 791 Laborde Court. And the applicant is applying for good for a conditional use permit. The applicant is proposing a bubble shop within the Redwood Fitness Center. The space is approximately 700 square feet and is, access and is accessible from both the fitness center and building frontage. And on later slides, slides you'll see that, that the bubble shop will have access to the fitness center and it has access from the frontage. Yeah, this is the general plan and uh, zoning land use designations. The general plan land use designation is light industry. An zoning land, land use designation is light industrial. And as you can see to the to the um south is a public institutional. Oh, I'm sorry. And and to the west, I mean to the to the east is uh, residential. And here's a neighborhood context of the of the site. And as you can see, this site is a this project is located along Sebastopol Road, a, a busy street. And here's another aerial view of the site and a site plan of the site. And you can you can kind of see right here, it's, it's kind of small that the bulb shop will have access to the um, gym, but but this is but the gym, I mean, but the bulb shop location was was previously previously used as a 
childcare facility for the gym, but now it's being used as a barber shop. And you can also see that the church that the barber shop is directly cut off from the from the barber shop, and the barber shop would not be active when the church is active, as the barber shop is closed on Sundays. And here's a floor plan plan of the barber shop, and right here is, is you can clearly see that the there's a door to the gym, and that door would be closed during during all um, hours of operation, and there's a front entrance door, so the so it's accessible from the front of the building as well. And there were six required findings for this for this site, and I was able to make each of them. And you can read it. And the project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act. It qualifies for a categorical, categorical exemption under Section 15301 since the project cons consists of only minor alterations. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a condition use permit to allow a personal services, i.e. a barber shop at 791 Laborde Court. Here is my contact information if you have any questions. We can close it. Oh. Okay, and uh, I will give you so uh, yeah. maybe, I think she will give you a great point. Okay, uh, the applicants, um, do you have any comments, anything you want to add? I do uh, want to ask a question regarding the conditions of approval and uh, uh, when will those conditions of approval be uh, completed? When, when will the resolution, a 10 day period of, of uh, okay. review end? It was, I understand it'll be April 2nd. Is that correct? 10 days from now falls in. It would be on the Sunday, and then the first is. Monday the, is off, so it'll be Chavez second. Day, so we're okay. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, the, the second. Second. second the actual yes. period ends. Yes. Correct. And I would also like to add the owner is here, Mr. Ramos. I'm Dino Bonos representing the uh, planner who submitted the application, Steve Sharp. Um, just to make that clear. Um, also, I wanted to find out how does uh, Mr. Ramos uh, verify that the conditions of approval are approved or verified so that he can start his business? Let me see. Is there a condition that says he needs There's to obtain a building permit? Building permit. Mm -hmm. So he has to obtain a building permit. When he obtains a building permit, he has to apply for a permit. But if there's no work to be done, well, I don't know what work there is to be done. I, he is, he is, I think he's unclear as to what needs to be done as far as uh, building permit. One of the conditions says obtain a building permit for the proposed project. So he would check with the building division about what is required for that building permit. Okay. And if building permit says you need a building permit, they have to review it. If not, we can check with them and confirm it. But the condition here says is a building permit required. Yeah. And you have to submit it, and when it gets issued, you can start your business. So he's in a working. He's working out of an existing space. So he has to submit a floor plan, or what does he need to? It, it, he needs to verify that with the building department. Correct. Okay. Yeah, verify with the building permit. Okay. Um, I think uh, I don't think there's any other questions. I don't know, Mr. Ramos. Do you have area space? Just check with the building division to make sure what it needs to be included in your okay. permit. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. And I don't see anyone from the public who wants to provide comments. We don't have comments, so I will close the public meeting for this item. It's a straightforward project. There is a space there that can be used for a barber shop or other uses. I wish it was a straightforward, easier. You didn't have to go through this process. But the zone says a use permit is required because of the land use in that area is industrial use. Parking space is available. We drew there yesterday and I checked the site. I don't see any issues and I don't have any questions and I'm going to approve this permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. With that, the speaking of the zoning administrator. Appeal periods. Oh, no, I told them the appeal oh. period is on April 2nd. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I wasn't here. <laughs> so with that, this meeting of the zoning administrator is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh.